So what exactly happened 12,800 years ago? Many people call it the Younger Dryas Impact. And they think that about 12,800 years ago, a giant comet broke up and hit the Earth in multiple places. The most extensive impact area was in Europe and in North America. But there is an Australian impact field as well. Now, some of the peer-reviewed science coming out blames air bursts on the craters across North America and also claim that this comet and this impact melted huge parts of the northern ice sheet covering Canada and Europe. But I have issues with that because a lot of the melting began 15,000 years ago and the Younger Dryas cosmogenic event was 12,800 years ago. That is quite a difference in time. Now, whatever caused the melting of the glaciers halted circulation of massive amounts of ocean water in the North Atlantic. And then it triggered an 1,100-year-long climatic cooling called the Younger Dryas. And whatever it was, if it was a comet that broke up or the sun that outburst, it contributed to the extinction of millions of large animals in the Northern Hemisphere. Now you're looking at the impact fields, supposed impact fields. But what we do know, based on the science, is that the Northern Hemisphere rapidly warmed 14,900 years ago and then began cooling. And this is called the bowling alarod warming event. It was supposed to stay warm until today, but something happened in here, the Younger Dryas, that cooled the Earth for thousands of years. From that spike at 14.9, the Earth didn't warm again until 11,500 years ago. So the cooling event was 3,400 years long before it rapidly warmed again and we entered the next interstadial. Now if we look at multiple locations around the Earth, we can clearly see here from the southern hemisphere at Cariaco, which is in Venezuela, that the warming lasted not only for the bowling alarod, but during the first two dryases up in the northern hemisphere where the temperature was dropping. It was not dropping in the southern hemisphere. Not until the Younger Dryas event at 12,900 years ago. And it in fact warmed up faster in the southern hemisphere than the northern hemisphere. So whatever occurred affected the northern hemisphere longer and greater than the southern hemisphere. Now there is evidence for a solar flare as the cause of the Pleistocene mass extinction. Not necessarily a comet at the 12.8 mark. I think a comet may have come in to our solar system 14,000 years ago or 15,000 years ago, but it didn't affect Earth. Nothing cosmogenic affected Earth until a spike at 12,900 years. Now, according to this paper by Paul Lavoillette, and we're going to look at this, the radiocarbon excess now, the hypothesis he presented is that an abrupt rise in atmospheric radiocarbon concentration, which is evident in the Cariaco Basin Varv record, at 12,837 years ago, plus or minus 10, is contemporaneous with the Rancho Labrean termination. This is the mass extinction. And it may have been produced by a supersized solar proton event, an SPE. This is a Carrington event, only probably much larger. Having a fluence of 1.3 times 10 to the 11th protons per centimeter squared. A solar proton event of this magnitude would have been large enough to deliver a lethal radiation dose of at least three to six sieverts to the Earth's surface, and hence could have been a principal cause of the final termination of the Pleistocene megafauna, 
and several genera of smaller mammals and birds. The event time correlates with a large magnitude acidity spike found at 1708.65 meters in the GISP-2. There it is. And typically when we see ammonia NH4 spikes and here we see an NO3 spike, this could have something to do with the burning of forests. Now this spike is associated with high NO3 ion concentrations and a rapid rise in beryllium. which is down here, the lower graph. Now, if you didn't know, beryllium-10 is only formed in one place, in Earth's atmosphere, and that's by cosmic ray spallation of nitrogen and oxygen. There is beryllium-9 on the surface that it is a stable isotope, but the radioactive isotope beryllium-10 is only formed due to cosmic ray nucleation and spallation of nitrogen and oxygen. And it has a half-life of 1.39 times 10 to the 6 years. And decays with beta decay to stable boron 10. But this spike here also corresponds to the radiocarbon excess beryllium 10 spike cosmogenic event right there. So this cosmogenic event, what does that mean? Well, it means there was a sudden cosmic ray influx. Now the depletion of nitrate ions within this acidic ice layer suggests that the snowpack surface at the time was exposed to intense UV for a prolonged period, which is consistent with a temporary destruction of the polar ozone layer by cosmic rays. The acidity event also coincides with large magnitude abrupt climatic excursions and is associated with elevated ammonium ion concentrations, which are an indicator of global fires. So this is an insane amount of data on something that happened in a very specific time frame from 12,937, 973 to 12,837 a period of just about 150 years of cosmic catastrophe, increased radiation, and a slow mass extinction that lasted for generations. There's also extraordinary biomass burning evidence, but in the last decade, many people have fought against this. But the data keeps piling up. And it's our supposition that there was a nuclear-type winter triggered by the Younger Dryas cosmic impacts or outburst of the sun 12,800 years ago. And so what caused the rapid warming? Well, it was something catastrophic because there are multiple lines of evidence for human population decline settlement and reorganization during the early Younger Dryas all around the world. We're talking Europe and Asia and specifically North America where the biggest effects were seen. Now what you're looking at here is a chart that I put together which shows the North American database of artifacts and on the left, you can see the Clovis artifacts that were known at 13,000 years ago, before present. There was a huge accumulation of Clovis on the east coast and east of the Mississippi. It was estimated to be millions upon millions of people living in that part of the U.S. And the Clovis culture went, existed all the way around the edge of the ice sheet, which you can see here pictured in gray all the way up into the potential ice-free corridor, all the way to the west coast, and even penetrating all the way to the tip of Texas. And so if we look at what that means on a graph, 
that during this cooling period, the Clovis people flourished in North America for the entire time until this drop down. And then after this drop down, there wasn't a single Clovis artifact in North America. Only Folsom, which is more advanced than Clovis, by the way. And then after 11,500 years, there were no Folsom people after the warming. So the Clovis were eliminated here. The Folsom were during this yellow period. And then after the yellow, the Folsom died. It's our supposition that the Folsom are advanced Clovis people that made it through the extinction event. And the data of the extinction event is very telling. Almost 70% of all the Clovis people were eliminated during this event, maybe up to 90%. And they relocated to the center of the U.S., the safe zone. The East Coast were hit by the major impactors in the Carolina Bays. The West here was catastrophically flooded starting 14,000 years ago. And the only safe zone was here in the middle where the Folsom people made it for that 1,500-year cold period until they went extinct at the Younger Dryas Rapid Warming 11,500 years ago. There were no more people in North America until 9,000 years ago. So there was a 1,500-year hiatus until the Plano culture about 10,000 years ago started populating Canada, an ice-free Canada once again. So we showed you some of the historical evidence based on artifacts and radiocarbon data. There could have been a large solar flare, and this would be a big one, with radiation that literally killed off the human species and the megafauna because those are the animals that need to be outside of caves on the surface during the day to hunt. And that's when you get affected. And the culture, the Clovis culture advanced and they made it through the deep ice age with their fulsome technology. And here in this graphic, you can get a pretty good idea of those Clovis points to the left the Younger Dryas boundary, and then the Folsom culture that made it through the coldest ice age only to be eliminated 11,500 years ago during the warming period. The Clovis culture had a very highly stylized point that is almost impossible to reproduce with the central flute that came up from the base. But the Folsom culture figured out how to carry this flute up the entire point something that almost no one has able to replicate. So this is a highly advanced culture that was eliminated during the Younger Dryas event. And then no one moved into North America until 1,500 years later. Completely mind-blowing. We're going to leave you links to an appendix on the extraordinary biomass burning episode from the wall back paper, it's hard to get, has some amazing graphs on that NH4 spike, which is evidence of boreal forest burning. And this isn't unique. These types of rapid climate change happen every 100,000 years. And no one really has a good mechanism for it, except the sun that the sun has some kind of 100,000-year cycle with smaller, less dramatic cycles that go on in between. And look, there is a symmetry here. So there's the first boom and a second big boom. First and second, here's a double. First and another double. So there is some type of pattern going on, but it's not as regular as some claim. Hope you got something out of the video. That is a boom to knowledge.
Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the expose. We're going to do some more deep dives on the black mats and the microspherules and the nano diamonds. But we wanted to open your eyes to the shifts in population densities and culture in North America. Something huge happened over a period of just 150 years, 12,800 years ago. And it includes beryllium-10, which comes from cosmic rays, and other radiocarbon excesses, which all lean towards a cosmic catastrophe with impactors and mass extinctions and the like. Be a hero and share this video. Support our work and become a Patreon. We love you.